Okay, let's look at our first multiple choice question together. So again, the first thing I would encourage everyone to do is try and figure out are you in proportion land or mean land. So it says there are 533 successes in a random sample of 1,000, uh, a random sample of size 1,000. How would you calculate the 90% confidence interval for this sample? So this is really vague. It's not telling you a whole lot of information. If you look through here, there's nothing about proportions Right? There's no units. It's, it's not really giving anything away other than this, this word that says successes. All right, so you know we're keeping some kind of frequency count. And whenever we have frequencies, we're going to turn those into proportions. And I can hear 533 out of 1,000. You can almost hear the sample proportion in there. The other giveaway is that if you look at these answers, you see numbers between zero and one, and those are going to be proportions. Now, it's possible that you have an average of like half an inch or something like that. So it is possible technically that this could have been mean land, but really with the combination of the word, <clears throat> excuse me, successes, and this decimal between zero and one, we're in proportion land, which means I know I'm going to use a z-star critical value, and I only took one sample. <clears throat> Again, my sample size is a thousand, but I only did this once. All right, so if I wanted to construct a confidence interval, all right, I'm going to refer back to our, our process, our general workflow, right? I'm going to check some assumptions. I'm going to make a title. I'm going to construct the interval, and I'm going to interpret it. And you might say, well, it's a multiple choice question. Do I have to do all of that? And the answer is no, you don't have to. But I just want to go through it so that we're practicing it together, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and over here, I'm gonna write that my sample proportion, I can see it, it's 533 out of 1,000, right? So that would be 0.533, and that's where these numbers are all coming from. Okay, great. For assumptions, if I was gonna do this, and again, it's multiple choice, so you don't have to, right? The first thing I wanna do is, did I have a random sample or did my sample represent my population? And if you can't remember what your assumptions are, we have that other flow chart for you, right? Which says, hey, check your assumptions. You're in proportion land. The first one is, did I have a random sample or did my sample represent my population? And for this problem, I don't know. They didn't give me that information. So I'm gonna put an X here. I, mean, I don't know. This is not a deal breaker assumption. So, okay, that's fine. The next thing I need to check is successes and failures. Did I have at least 10 successes and at least 10 failures? And that's the NP prime and N1 minus P prime. So let's go crunch those numbers. All right, so in this case, NP prime will be 1,000 times 0.533. And N1 minus P prime will be 1,000 times 1 minus 0.533, right? The complement. So if I crunch these numbers, I'm looking at 533. All right, if I do 1,000 times the complement, I'm looking at 467. I'm just gonna do a quick check. Does that add up to my sample size? That's great, so I've got successes and failures checked off. And the next thing I would want to check is that the sample size was small relative to my population. Now, again, if I take 1,000 and I multiply it by 10 because we're using that 10% rule, I'm getting 10,000. I have no information one way or the other. Is, is our population at least 10 times as large as our sample? They give me no context. So, I could say this is a question mark, but I'm just gonna roll the die and pretend it's met. In my career, I have stopped problems, I think twice, because the sample size was not small relative to our population. All right, so I'm gonna say the deal breaker assumptions met. I'm gonna go through this. Plus, there's no option over here saying I can't do this, this problem. There's no like option E. You should not do this because not all of your assumptions were met. So let's go get the formula and see what we would plug in, right? Our formula is P prime plus a Z star, square root P prime, one minus P prime over N. So we got this margin of error that always has a critical value times a standard error. 
All right, so let's see what we're working with. So I got P prime plus or minus Z star square root P prime one minus P prime all over N. All right, so we know for our P prime, we're gonna plug in 0.533. All right, and can we see all this still? Yeah, so we've got 0.533 plus or minus some number times the square root of 0.533, one minus 0.533 over, and my n was 1,000 here. Now, for the z star number, let's go see what we're working with. I've got a 90% confidence level, and if I'm z starring it, it's always at this bottom row, so it looks like I've got a 1.645 there. Scrunch that in. Okay, so let's see if we can start to figure out what our answers are. At this point, you can spot it, right? This is not the right critical value letter, not the right one, not the right one. B has got to be my answer. And you might say, well, it doesn't quite match up. Like, I see the 0.533, I see the 1,000, but where's this 0.467 coming from? Don't forget that we could actually crunch this number. On my calculator, if I did 1 minus 0.533, if I got the complement, to 53%, it would be about 47%. So that's where this number is coming from. So one minus 0.533 is 0.467. And again, you didn't have to go through all the shenanigans. I would argue if you were doing this, if you saw it was 90% confidence, or the level, confidence level, excuse me, was 90%, you could actually get to B pretty quickly because that's the only one with the correct number for the critical value. All right, so we're gonna try another multiple choice question together on the next page. I'll see you in a bit, bye.